Today, we are joined by Leslie Oman, the founder of Happy Doodle. Hi, how are you? Yes. Oh, great. And we're so glad to have you. In 2017, you created Heffy Doodle after your husband, Craig, tried to convince you for many years to turn your doodles into stamps. Currently, Leslie lives in Scotland with her husband and her daughter, Piper. Welcome again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. All right. So we need to first do a little bit of an intro. Mm -hmm. So you are not from Scotland, but you live there. So tell us a little bit how wh- how you're in Scotland now and how this came to be. How it all happened. Yes, originally I'm from Northern Ireland, actually. Hence my Irish accent coming out here. <laughs> loud yes. and clear. Um, but I went to university in Scotland and that's where I met my, my husband, Craig. Okay. And we actually, after university, we moved down to England for work. Um, he works in the computer games industry. So there was more uh, of that kind of thing down there. And um, I went with him because I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then we always said that we would come back to Scotland. Scotland feels like home. So this year we finally took the plunge and made it back here. And the good news is that um, properties are cheaper up here, so I get a lot more oh. space. And it was definitely the right time because Heffy Doodle is growing, and now I can actually have my house back and have space for Heffy Doodle, <laughs> which is good. Nice. You can have it. Heffy Doodle headquarters in Scotland. Absolutely. I love it. So the story of how this came to be is... Great. I mean, everyone loves everyone loves a good startup story, an entrepreneurial story. This is one of the great ones. <laughs> um, you have to share with us. For, okay, let's not go with the name right now. But how okay. how did you get this to start? So we talked about the doodles, mm-hmm. and then how did you get this off the ground? Well, it all kind of started. If I go back to when I started actually crafting and was introduced to the actual craft world, that's probably when it actually started at Loki and I became a crafter. Um, and that Loki. was at university. And I went to France for a year. And Craig's mom actually bought me a scrapbook kit from uh, an online shopping channel. Mm-hmm. And I remember very vividly actually going into a craft shop in Glasgow and walking in I was like a kid in a candy store I was just like this is amazing and um I went get, went in every weekend spent all my money there and before long I got a job there I was teaching um workshops and doing demos and I just absorbed it all like a sponge I just loved it and my degree was nothing to do with crafting um, as is many um, most often the case and True. um I when I then finished uni and we moved to England and I mm-hmm. had to get a job in the real world but crafting was definitely my passion and actually Craig has always been my biggest cheerleader bless him and he said you should start a blog and do YouTube videos so mm-hmm. I started with that and I loved it because I didn't have the shop to go in and and share with customers but that was my little corner of the world to share my creations and um I guess I love teaching people like that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the YouTube channel or blog was um, not necessarily about your doodles. It was about you crafting, card making. What was it about? Scrapbooking, card making? It was my crafting, my paper crafting. So it started, I think, a little bit of card making and scrapbooking, making mini books, paper crafting, Mm a little bit of altered art. Um, And I was using other people's products. But actually what would happen is that I would... I'd be stamping and I'd make a card and I would go, oh, I really want a surfboard. I'll just draw one and I'll draw it. And I would make my own little elements to go on the card because I had these visions of the finalized And you cut them out. Sure. And I would draw it in a pen that was like the same thickness as the stamps I had. Try to, uh, you know, use that sort of style. What I thought would would go with the products that I'm using. Um, Mm -hmm. And I love to doodle. And then... I was constantly being told by Craig, you just need to make your own stamps on. And of course, 
I guess looking back, you're too scared to do things like that. You're like, yeah, yeah, husband. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I can't turn this into a. Do- I just want to. Oh, yeah. It's just a doodle. It's a surfboard. It's just a. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and after a little while of doodling and just crafting, and I was on design teams, and I actually did some design work for another stamp company. And okay. Craig, Craig was like, you've just proven that you could do this. Why don't you do it? And exactly. You know, a little bit of me was just wanting to shut him up. <laughs> Fine. Here, yeah. I'll try and show you. Sure. Yeah, I know. But who got the last laugh? laugh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, we decided I just I had a full time, really sort of full on job. And it probably took me the most of a year to design. I thought, right, I will just release a small release, kind of like a bucket list thing, something I wanted to do. So let's call it done. And um, I designed, I think it was five stamps, one sentiment and four with like critters. And I wanted to Mm -hmm. do the dies. And I was very adamant about that because I love to have the coordinating dies. Mm-hmm. And whenever you have dies and stamps, actually, there's always minimum order quantities. And Correct. I thought, right, well, what I'll do is I will launch a Kickstarter campaign. This is another one of Craig's brainwaves. Yes. He's clever like that. It's like, don't tell me you don't have money to start it. Maybe we just do this. I know. See what happens. He's a problem solver for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So that's what I did. I we launched the wow. Kickstarter and we needed about, I think it was 450 pounds. So okay. um that's what I wanted. So I don't know what that is. Probably you got the you got 450 pounds, didn't oh, you? Oh yeah, and then some <laughs> so after, after 20 minutes, when it goes live, it's all exciting. And mm-hmm. then after 20 minutes, we hit the target. And I was like, this is amazing, brilliant. And then it just kept going up and up and up. And then the next day I woke up and it was on something like um, 2,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the 30 days, we had raised over $20,000 worth of pre-orders. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was my reaction. That's what dreams are made out of. Well, it was wow, but it was also, how am I going to do this? (laughs) Uh (laughs) Because you're like, Oh, oh, people want this. Right. And yeah, so actually, that's yeah. my job, my, my, my real job, my full time job, I wasn't loving anymore. And I just took I just I actually remember coming into Craig on a lunch break. And I said, I think I just quit my job. <laughs> He's like, what? What? Like, I think that that's what happened. <laughs> I see. So I'd had a conversation of, you know, just what is the notice period? And then it just in 20 minutes, it, it happened. It happened. So yeah, I quit my so, job and I so did that it. This, so that your your baby could happen, this new company. Yeah, and here it is. Yeah. And we're four years <laughs> in my- doodle. Yes. Yeah. Four years and you guys have over, I think, 400 products, correct? Yes, we have just yes. gone past 400. Big milestone. That's so significant. <gasps> it's I huge. Know. And okay, so the other really <laughs> great part of this startup story that I learned for the first time is the name Heffy yeah. Doodle. We get a lot. I of think questions I know where Doodle that. comes from. Sure, but sure. <laughs> what? How? How did this come to be? Well, yes, it is a little bit of a funny story, and once again involves Craig. <laughs> oh, Craig! Oh, Craig! Craig! So, um, when we were first dating, Craig would marvel at the fact that I would eat so much food. I love food. I just, Mm -hmm. there's nothing I love better than having a nice warm plate of pasta or something in front of me. And I love my food. And I I would always, you know, sometimes in families, I grew up in a, in a home where dad got the big portion and everyone else got the little portion. I was not about that. (laughs) I was like, -uh, none of that, please. Mm -mm. So I would, I would eat and I'd love to eat. And he's okay. like, how, how are you so slender? How are you so slim? You're like a big hungry heifer. Where do you put it? Exactly. <gasps> so he would call me a hungry, a hungry hef- heifer. heifer. And it was funny. It was said in jest. It was not a problem. Uh-huh. And I yeah. think after about the third or fourth time that this hungry heifer was dropped, I completely you know, snapped at him. And I was like, can you please stop? Thank you. I'm going to get a complex. Stop. That's not nice. And he threw his arms around me and said, but you're my hungry heffy. 
Of course, I had to forgive him, and I was like, oh, okay. And actually, he just shortened it. Yeah. So he, my he shortened it. Heffy. And ever since then, it's been a term of endearment. He calls me Heffy. And whenever I finally created my blog of my own crafty bits and pieces, I called it Hungry Heffy Crafts, which was kind of an homage to him. Okay. He helped me with all the YouTube, okay. all the technical support. And then that, that, that was it. I'm going to remember coming to deciding a name for the business. Um, it made sense, I think, to call it Heffy Doodle because I draw everything myself. It is a doodle by Heffy. Mm-hmm. It's a Heffy Doodle. But it's, it's a Heffy Doodle. It's a Heffy Doodle. But it's also not something that you would in, in, like immediately link back to my name. So, And I think it's memorable. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's so perfect. And I love the story behind it. And Craig has been like so integral in just even supporting you and like poking you. He's the and, best. Like, you know, and the worst so all at awesome. once. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't they all? I know. Of course. The best course. ones are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm very so lucky. heavy doodle, like you said, um, when you started with those five stamps, a little bit of critters, a little bit of sentiments. Mm-hmm. Do you think or when did you like kind of finalize or get like the style for Heffy Doodle, oh. like your your brand? Like, has that happened? Like, when did that happen? Good question. I think in one way it happened immediately and another way I'm still, I'm still learning <laughs> because I know what I want. I want cute. I want whimsical. I love critters and animals. I'm... Um, but then in another way, I don't sometimes, sometimes I just don't feel like an artist. Like I, I hate drawing people. So that's why I don't really have mm. people in my collection. But, okay. but um, my theory there is, eh, I'll just do what I want to do. <laughs> Take, it's heffy doodle. Exactly. It's my doodles. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think the cute and whimsical aspect. Okay. That's what I like to create with. So that's what I tend to make. Um, sometimes people will say to me, oh, please make this, make flowers. Make that. But sometimes I just think that that's not actually something I enjoy drawing. So I don't feel like it'll have my essence in it. And I don't think if I if I don't love it, then I maybe I won't be able to create well with it. Across. Yeah, exactly. I think that yeah. will translate. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So kind of all at once and at probably ever evolving when you choose or don't choose what to release at, with each release. Yes, absolutely. But I still do okay. like struggle. Sometimes I'll draw something and I'm like, it's not quite there. I can't tell you how many started stamp sets I have and it just goes to a draft and I come back to it. And there's some sort of sweetness that happens when you come back to a half finished stamp set and it finishes. You're like, yeah, hallelujah. It wasn't meant to be when earlier it, had it was meant to, to marinate. happen later. It had to exactly. marinate. Exactly. It had to marinate. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think or what do you hope people are getting or get out of heavy doodle products and your lines? And what do you hope that they get? I actually hope they get mileage out of it. That might sound corny or something. But for me, mm-hmm. I um, love, absolutely love mixing and matching. And I actually really like mixing and matching brands as well. I'm a big like advocate of that. I think there's room for everybody. Um, and that's why we like to do collaborations with other companies yes. as well. I think that's a massive part of who we are as a company. Um, so when I make a stamp set or a die or any sort of product, I actually nearly always go, can I use this with the speech bubble die? Can I use this with something that's in my back catalog because I know our customers everybody loves what's hot I know that but to be able to go back and reuse your supplies and get more mileage out of it I think that makes life just even better and also makes you help justify the crafty spend I mean certainly that's my approach to it (laughs) yeah totally it, it, it of course can get expensive if you're only going after the new stuff. Of but I'm glad that you think about that. I hope that customers appreciate that when they start to add things here and there. Oh, I can use this. Oh, that matches with this or this fits with that. I Absolutely. That. And I also hope that they get just a sense of fun from it. I want it to I want the the uh, sentiments to be whimsical and just make people smile and mm-hmm. we we get that a lot from our customers. People commenting on just that they love the 
sort of the the theme and the 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 sense of joy that they get from the cuteness and mm-hmm. the, the fun sentiments. Yeah. Yeah. So what like if if someone was looking at some cards mm-hmm. that a crafter made how what how would you describe if they looked like oh that is a heffy doodle card <laughs> like what would a signature heffy doodle card have like what elements are in it all right so for me i would say maybe an inked background i love creating backgrounds okay. with ink maybe i'll start with a colored card stock and add some ink maybe a little splatter but i love creating with um, like building the colors myself. I love them. Okay. And um, layers. Love lots of layers as okay. well. Maybe a little scene building action going on. And critters. Got to have some critters on there. And okay. a fun sentiment. Something cheesy. Something okay. corny. And maybe yeah. even something interactive. Um, we don't have a massive selection okay. of interactive guys. But I think there's ways that you can make cards interactive. Even with what you've got in your craft room. So I personally love okay. interactive cards. Lots of people are maybe maybe not confused, but intimidated. overwhelmed, intimidated yeah. by the interact. Like, what does interactive card mean to you? And what types like c- could you share with our listeners sure. the different kinds of ways of making them interactive? So, what I mean by interactive is simply that the recipient has something to do instead of just looking at the card so maybe um i guess it's a way for them to play with the card i I think as adults we don't play enough really you Mm -hmm. know so maybe it's a little wobble and you just get to give it a little tickle a little poke with your fingers Mm -hmm. and it has a little wibble wobble or a shaker so it has maybe sequins Mm -hmm. or beads in it so it makes a nice fun sign when you shake it around um maybe there's some little elements to pull like a little tab to pull something to lift up um and then if you're going uh, to the extreme maybe it's something really fun like a light up card those are Oh really, wow! Really yes, cool. yes. Press down. Yeah, with those galaxies oh, and yeah. stuff. Oh, I love that look. Yeah, yeah. They they are great, and I can see how it can seem intimidating at first glance. But I think um, I hear this all the time on our live streams: is that people will say that's actually much easier than I thought. And really, yes, definitely. And I think also one of the things that people enjoy from my live streams is that. Um, they see it being made in real time and they can get the opportunity then to ask questions as we go along and really right break it down into simple steps. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that is, you are right that that is a common thing that people see and say when they see these very intricate cards. What are your best tips? How about you give me five mm-hmm. tips for people out there that see yours or other people's amazing cards, but they feel super overwhelmed and they feel like they cannot do that on their own. What are some tips you can give? All right. Them? Okay. So, so first of all, find the card that you really like. If you want to okay. um, recreate it or recreate your version of it, use because you don't need to have exactly the same stems. Just use what you have in your stash. And, um, you know, look at the layout of it. Look at where the elements go and um, just really, you know, break it down. Maybe pick a color palette that you think will work. Mm -hmm. And I would also recommend that you join live streams. You definitely have that opportunity to ask questions as you go along and to say, I'm really confused about this part of it. And normally what happens then is it opens up a conversation of some people struggle with X, Y, and Z. And here's a, here's some tips yeah. to deal with it. And um, mm-hmm. so many times you will learn lots by uh, joining those live streams. Also join a community. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, yes. in uh, on Facebook, we have a Heffy Doodlers Facebook fan group, mm-hmm. even the scrapbook dot com um, community mm-hmm. and you'll see other people and I promise you when we first make cards that are interactive everybody's intimidated and everybody's scared yes and and yes. you know too much to mess up yeah and it, it's just paper guys it, it's it's fine and sometimes if it's something really 
engineered. Just make a blank. Don't even bother inking the card. Just make it with blank card, first of all, so that you can understand the mechanism. Maybe the word mechanism scares people. Just the, the way that it folds, the way that it moves. Um, use blank card just to kind of figure it out. And at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if it is too overwhelming at that point, it's not necessary. But I think most people yes. will find that they will go, ah, I get it. And mm-hmm. then a whole mm-hmm. new world opens up. Hmm. Yes. And it becomes their card. Or maybe they do um, it to an extent. Yes. Maybe they're like, well, I only do shakers. Or I do pulls like this because I think it's easier. Or the, the, But once, they, once you play yes. and once you try then you'll find your own style. Absolutely. And that's how we're always constantly evolving into different types of um, interactive cards because go back, I don't know, five years ago, there was a couple of maybe a shaker and things, but now there's all sorts of amazing, completely engineered dies that die cut the exact kind of mechanism for it. It makes it so accessible for everybody. And YouTube is a massive resource Mm -hmm. too, to watch videos. Um, And so that's, that's good, but I, Amazing. I will say, you know, pick one and just try it. Because if you keep watching videos, yeah. you will get, you know, further down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. rabbit. I agree. And you'll and never more start. Yeah, I like your idea. Just mm-hmm. pick one. Pick one. And just okay. go for it. So what is, so th- this will be airing, you know, not tomorrow sure. in a little bit. But what are you most excited about that's coming next for Heffy Doodle or some the new collections? What is what excites well, you? Actually, I'm most excited about um, our latest release because it has little squirrels and it has a deer mm-hmm. and some fall elements. Now, I love autumn as we say over here, a fall. Okay. I always decorate a mantle. Yes. It's like my most favorite. My, I think fall gets more attention than Christmas around here. Sometimes <laughs> I have like a big box of fall like decorations so, and I love it. And this year we, we actually have some fall theme stamps. Although I have to say I have designed them in a way that they can be somewhat Mm. evergreen. They don't have many like fall or Christmassy sentiments. Like I say, I want people to be able to have longevity and be able to get a lot of use out of them. So you could have a squirrel on a spring themed card and and things like that. So I'm definitely really excited about them. I can't wait to actually play more with them. Oh, I love it. And so in, in your, it's either in your last collection or your, or your, it's yeah, my, in your yes. most recent collection where this one's coming up, mm-hmm. but where did the pandas <gasps> come from? My pandas. So the pandas was in the start yeah. of the summer. Uh, and okay, okay, okay. that uh, collection actually was inspired by our move to Scotland. Um, and there was a lot of Scottish themed items in it, but pandas actually was a little bit of a, a, a left hook, a little bit of curveball, because my daughter, her name is Piper, and she is panda mad at the moment. She's obsessed. Oh, yes. really? So she has been okay. trying to get me to do pandas in the Heffy Doodle collection for over a year, but she is the harshest critic. So there have oh, really? been pandas drawn that did not make the cut. <laughs> They had to be her cute. Oh yeah, approval. she was definitely you know quality control with the pandas. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Pan- Craig and Piper, they're they're behind Happy yeah, Doodle for sure. For sure. <laughs> sometimes the silent partner, <laughs> sometimes the not so silent. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you wish yeah. wish we're silent for partners. Sure. I know. That's where awesome. they came from. So, what is something that? I don't know, it kind of resonates with you in your life, like maybe a phrase or a quote. You, We asked you ahead mm-hmm. of time, and you said that the phrase that has always resonated with you was, what other people think about me is none of my business. And I love that quote. I've heard mm-hmm. it before. So share a little bit with us about that. Okay. Well, I love this quote as well, as, as you know, because I think as human beings, and maybe also a little bit as women as well, that we get um, kind of in our head and we worry a lot about what other people think. And um, 
when you kind of turn that on its head and think about what other people think about me is none of my business, um, it actually gives you a sense of freedom. And as crafters, I think this is actually a really, really like cool thing to think about. And that quite a good mantra because I've been there. I still do it to this day. I'm sure everybody does. You compare yourself to other people, but you have to understand mm-hmm. that other like everyone has a journey and different people are in different parts of their life, have their have different situations at home. Everybody has different like a number of hours they can craft every week and um, different experience, different talents as well. So your journey mm-hmm. is going to be different from everyone else's. And there is no shame in that. And I think a big hurdle mm-hmm. for many crafters, especially starting out, is that they're scared to share their work because they don't think yes. that it's up to the quality of those around them. And it's, it's that's I always find that that's such a shame because I know I have seen people share their work and seen their growth and actually I love that I love going back to those first scrapbook pages from 2001 and going ah look what I do I've learned so much since then Mm -hmm. you can see the growth yeah yeah so Mm -hmm. don't be scared just be Mm -hmm. brave and share it Mm -hmm. and and the most part yeah. people are very kind and I think you'll find a community that, that loves you and will support you. 